Good morning. My name is Lachey. I am the communications coordinator here at Sanies. Welcome to Financial Fridays with Sanies and Equitable. Today's topic is all about Social Security. We are excited to offer these sessions in cooperation with our partner, of course, Equitable Advisors. They have been a long time standing presence in New York and a large portion of their New York client base is built upon the work they do within the public education system. Through Equitable, Sanies members can receive a lot of benefits, competitive insurance rate, and a full array of retirement services um, and a complimentary financial profile as a Sanies members, which we urge you to take advantage of. It's a great benefit. Joining us today from Equitable is Joe. We will have questions at the end, but feel free to like ask questions during, and then at the end, of course, we'll get to your questions. Our Q&A time is best used for general questions, but of course, if he can answer them, he'll answer them. Um, so um, also this is being recorded and this will be uploaded on Sany's um, YouTube channel for your records. You'll find contact information for Joe and other regional equitable representatives at sanies.org. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to Joe. All right, perfect. Thanks, Lachey. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, happy Friday to everybody. Um, what we'll do today is we're gonna talk about a very important topic uh, social security. Um, I know a lot of people have different opinions on social security, a lot of questions as far as how does it work, when to take social security. We're going to answer a lot of those um, high level questions today, giving you a baselining understanding of what that could look like. And then from there, next steps uh, moving forward. So bear with me one second. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And like Lachey said, if you have any questions, uh, Throughout the presentation, definitely put those in the chat. And then at the end, I will go ahead and uh, answer those for us. Okay, perfect. Can everybody see my screen okay? That's perfect. All yep. right, awesome. So here's the agenda for today and what we'll go through. So first, we'll just talk about, you know, Social Security, the value of it, really the main purpose behind it. We'll talk about the different types of Social Security and all the different benefits that are available within the program. Uh, we'll also go through some other factors about the benefits and how it can impact your specific situation. And then finally, everybody's topic, taxes. We'll talk about how taxes play, play a factor in once you're receiving those Social Security benefits and what that looks like there. But first, I always just like to dive into really what is the value of Social Security? So a lot of us know that it's a guaranteed income that we can receive once we do decide to elect. Now, when to elect it, we'll get into that in a couple of slides here. But the value of Social Security is actually pretty important. You know, a lot of people, depending on your situation, may have pensions coming in, as, as most of us do here on this call. Maybe you have a spouse or maybe a significant other that may not have a pension. So the Social Security can be a very important piece to somebody's retirement picture. Um, so that's why it's important to at least know the values, know the understanding behind it. And then whenever you decide it's best for you to start collecting and receiving it, you know, that's where we can go ahead and help you here at Equitable Advisors. Um, you'll see a QR code at the top right of some of the slides. That QR code is linked directly to my email address here. So if you do have any questions or you would like to set up a meeting after this conversation, this webinar here today, just scan the QR code, shoot me an email, and then I'll get right back to you and we can go ahead and we can we can schedule that. Now, going back to social security benefits, there's really three different types that somebody can go ahead and collect. Now they each work differently, so we'll go through um, each of them here today at a very high level. The first one, which a lot of people are familiar with with social security is gonna be the individual retirement side of the board. Um, so that is based off of somebody's work history. Um, you do have to qualify to receive Social Security, which is 40 quarters or 10 years uh, that somebody does have to work for. Um, and there's different retirement ages that you can select based off of your birth year, which we'll get into. So retirement is definitely going to be the most common one that people think of when it comes to Social Security. Now, there are also two other benefits available within the Social Security plan. There's a spousal benefit where maybe one spouse versus the other. One of them is more so of the breadwinner of the household and the other spouse was more so either a lower earner or maybe they didn't work and they stayed at home. There are opportunities to take advantage of a spousal benefit if it is more than the lower income earners benefit for social security. 
So we'll talk a little bit about that today. And then there's also survivor benefits. So maybe somebody does pass away prematurely, there is an opportunity for that surviving spouse to go ahead and take advantage of, of, of their, their benefits. We'll also talk about divorces. Um, divorces are pretty, pretty popular in today's day and age, uh, for better or for worse. So we'll talk about, you know, if you are in a situation uh, with a divorce or the marriage, you know, how can you take advantage of some of the benefits that may be available to you there as well? So talking about Social Security, we meet with a lot of clients, a lot of prospects, um, and we always encourage people to log into this official Social Security website to create your own account. Um, the official website for Social Security is ssa.gov, as you can see right there on the left-hand side. That gives you the benefits, your Social Security estimations, values, all online. So if you haven't created an account already, you just go right to the website, follow the create account instructions. It does take about a business day for them to pull all your information and give you access. But once you do have access right on your main page on the dashboard, you'll see all your social security benefits, the estimations, and the different ages as far as when you can collect that. Uh, we've actually been encourage, encouraging people, even if you still have some years to go before collecting social security, um, we have been been getting some security um, threats associated with that. So if you don't create it, somebody else could, could hack in and create one for you. So nonetheless, go online, create your account, download your statements so you can start getting an idea of what that looks like. Um, I know some clients do receive the social security statement in the mail. Again, that's a great uh, tool just to again, see what your current benefits are um, and what it could look like for you down the road there. Now for the individual side of the board, so the retirement individual benefits, um, the way that this works is your social security estimations are gonna be based off of your highest 35 earning years in your life. So social security, obviously they're linked with the IRS when you file your taxes, they take the highest 35 earning years that you have, they multiply that into their equation to create your expected monthly benefit. So very similar to the New York State pension, right? If you're thinking about your years of service, same exact thing on the social security side of the board, it's just your highest 35 years is what they factor into. And on the right hand side, when you do get your statements or if you do go online, you're gonna see that different ages are gonna to equate to different monthly benefit amounts. The earlier you take social security, the less benefit, the less money you will receive on a monthly basis. And then each year as you delay taking Social Security, the higher the benefit that's going to be. Again, very similar to the New York State pension system. The earlier you retire, lower the, re the lower the monthly benefit you'll get. Every year you continue to work, get that extra year of service, you get higher salary, you're going to have a higher pension down the road there. So when you're looking at Social Security, one of the ages or the factors that you want to consider is what's called the full retirement age or the FRA. The full retirement age is when the Social Security Administration really wants you to start collecting Social Security. Depending on your birth year is really going to depend on what that full retirement age is for you. So 1937 or earlier, I don't think there's too many people on the call born in 1937 or earlier, your full retirement age is 65. Retirement age 66 is gonna be anywhere between 1943 and 1954. And then if you were born in 1960 or later, your full retirement age is gonna be age 67. And if you look at that line graph on the bottom there, you would receive 100% of your social security benefit base. If you do take it, in this case, you're born in between, let's say 1950, you decide to take it at your full retirement age, you would receive 100% of that benefit. Now you can take it earlier. The earliest you can take Social Security is gonna be age 62. So that's the same across the board there. The earlier you take it, like we said, the lower the percentage you'll get from that benefit base of your full retirement age. The highest age that you can take Social, social Security is age 70. So that's the max cutoff point as far as when you can take Social Security. 
Um, and even if you don't take Social Security, and let's say you're 71, 72, you don't get any sort of increase of a benefit. It's going to stay the same. So it doesn't make sense to delay taking Social Security for 71, 72, because that benefit's going to be the same. You have to take it at 70 um, as that benefit base does not increase. So percentage-wise, because I know a lot of people will ask, well, if I want to take it early as possible, well, what is that going to cost me, right? What sort of a percentage decrease are they going to cut? And we're going to look at an example of age 66. So the numbers are pretty similar when you're looking at 65, 66, or 67 as a full retirement age. But in this example, we're going to assume that this person's full retirement age is age 66. So the earliest that you can take it, like we said, is age 62, but you're only going to receive 75% of that benefit. So Social Security is going to cut that number down by 25%. And then you can see every year you get closer to that full retirement age, it's going to increase closer to that 100% number there. So you are going to take a little bit of a haircut from that monthly benefit, um, but depending on your situation, it may or may not make sense for you. Now, there's also going to be a benefit as far as delaying Social Security. So like we said, every year in between that full retirement age, in this example, 66, to the max of age 70, you're actually going to get an 8% increase on that figure. So it goes from 100 to 108 to 116 and so on and so forth. But once you hit age 70, it can't go above that 132% number of your benefit base. Um, we get a lot of questions about personal situations. Joe, when should I take it? When shouldn't I take it? Again, we'll talk about that in a couple slides, but just for illustration purposes, it's important to know that yes, you can take it early, but it is going to be a reduced amount for yourself there. Let's transition talk about spousal benefits. So this does come up a lot. Um, you know, we get clients who may be in a scenario where one spouse works, maybe the other spouse doesn't, maybe one spouse is really the breadwinner, makes a lot more money than, than the other spouse. Well, Spousal benefits come into play as you can take advantage of your spouse's social security numbers and figures. So a spouse can take up to 50% of the primary worker's benefits. So if somebody is expected to make $3,000 a month for social security, that spouse is entitled to collect $1,500 a month for their own personal social security. Now, what they do is if you do want to go ahead and take a look at spousal benefits, we would compare the one spouse's own individual social security estimation. We'll compare what 50% of their spouse's benefit is. And the social security administration allows you to take the higher of the two, right? So going back to that example, let's say one spouse makes their estimate is $3,000 per month, but the other spouse, they're only looking to get $1,000 per month. 50% of 3,000, 1,500. So it would make sense to take half of their spouses as a spousal benefit for their social security. You'll get an extra $500 per month. There are some stipulations and certain situations if you are divorced, which we'll get into here in a second. Um, but the main benefit is that it's okay if one spouse is more of a breadwinner versus the other, there is an opportunity to still take advantage of some of those benefits there. Now, when can you take it? Earliest is gonna be age 62, like we said before. And here are the decreases, percentage decreases for taking the spousal benefit. So you can see at age 62, you would be entitled to 35% of your spousal benefit. And then each year it would slowly increase. And then at that spouse's full retirement age, it would always be 50 and it never goes or never increases from there. So again, very similar to that age 70 at the late retirement years. If you're going to take a spousal benefit, you really want to wait. You want to wait and take the most amount. Age 66 is going to really be that number. It doesn't make sense to continue waiting, moving on from there. The third type are going to be the survivor benefits. So this is in the event that maybe one of the spouses passed away there is still an opportunity for the surviving spouse to again receive the higher of either their own individual benefit or their deceased spouse benefit. There are a couple of requirements. So as you can see on the left-hand side there, you must be at least 60 years old 
to collect the survivor spouse benefit option. You can do 50 if, if that person is disabled, so they do allow you to take it early. And you must be married for at least nine months prior to the spouse's death. So those are the two requirements that you do have to take. And then as you can see right there, there are some exceptions if it was um, an accident, um, but you would have to go through the Social Security Administration to appeal that to get that benefit um, activated. So when it comes to being divorced from marriages, you can still collect an ex-spouse's benefits, whether they are still living or if it's a survivor benefit. So let's say somebody gets divorced, their ex-spouse is still living, that spouse can still take a certain percentage of their spousal, their ex-spouse's benefits, but they do have to hit some requirements. They would have to have been married for at least 10 years. So that's one of the requirements. Um, they have to currently be unmarried. So if you're looking to take your ex-spouse's benefit, you could not be remarried. You would have to be unmarried in order to qualify for that. Have to be at least age 62 to go ahead and start taking the early Social Security retirement age. And lastly, you have to be divorced for at least two years. So those are all the metrics that you would have to hit, check off the box. And if you do hit those, you can go ahead to the Social Security, apply for um, that spousal benefit. Again, it would be the, still the same uh, requirements as the spousal benefits. It would just be the one extra step because uh, that marriage is now divorced. Similar to the survivor benefits, so same thing. You still have to have been married to that ex-spouse for 10 plus years. Now, if they're a survivor benefit, it's a little bit different. You can be unmarried if you're under the age of 60, or you could be remarried if you're 60 plus. So they do allow you to still collect your ex-spouse's survivor benefits if you're already remarried and above the age of 60. <clears throat> so those are the two differences there. Again, we've been seeing that a lot with our personal clients. If you know they, again, were not the breadwinner of the home over the course of the, the marriage years, it may make more sense to go ahead and take uh, spousal benefit, even if they are divorced at that point in time. Now, one of the questions that we definitely get, which is the most popular question when it comes to Social Security, is, Joe, when do I take it, right? When do most people take Social Security? When should I take Social Security? You know, really what makes the most sense? And at the end of this presentation, I'll go through our financial planning software that we utilize for all of our clients so you can see um, how we can benefit with your specific situation. But I think one of the main factors that we talk about when collecting Social Security is going to be life expectancy, right? Like we said, the earlier you take it, yes, you can get it a few years earlier than the full retirement age or the late retirement age, but you're going to be taking a reduced amount. So now it becomes a factor as far as, well, how much are those reduction amounts, right? How is that going to impact my financial situation? But also, too, the main factor is life expectancy, right? How long do I think I'm going to last in retirement in order to collect and maximize this benefit? Now, obviously, nobody has a crystal ball, right? We don't know the our expiration date is what I like to call um, down the road there. But we can take a look at some historical facts and figures, right? So if you look at a male age 65, there's a 52% chance that they're going to be living to at least age 87. Drops a little bit to age 93. But there's a good shot we're living to our mid to early 90s. Look at a female. Um, you know, just, just historically, females have a higher percentage. They live longer uh, than us males, a lot healthier. 50% chance that they're going to live right up to, to age 90. Um, it could even go to their mid to late 90s as well. I think one of the bigger factors too is taking a look at family history. So what does longevity look like in somebody's family history? Are you in a family that, you know, really time's not on your side? Or are you in a family that's pretty healthy, pretty consistent? You know, maybe your parents are are still living, grandparents live to live to close to 90s or 100s. I think that's also going to be a determining factor too in seeing what your current health status is. Now, when it comes to the facts and the figures, right? Yes, we can throw out numbers. We can run analysis, forecast out which 
option, you're going to get the most bang for your buck. But also, too, it's a peace of mind, right? I know a lot of times people say, well, you know, life's not promised. I'm going to take this money and I'm going to enjoy it while I'm young. The break even point for Social Security, again, it depends on facts and figures, but in general, where do you start making more money if you start to delay taking Social Security versus taking it early? The break even is usually in your mid to early 80s. So right around your early 80s to mid 80s is where you can start feeling taking it later down the road in Social Security. Then the question is, well, what am I doing with the extra two, three, four hundred dollars when I'm 85, 86 years old? Right. So again, everybody's different. It really depends on your current situation. Do you need the Social Security income sooner versus later? But that's the type of work that we do for all of our clients is determining what's going to be the best number for that specific individual moving forward. Another question that we typically get is, all right, I'm taking it at 62, 63 years old. But what happens if I want to continue working in retirement? <clears throat> it's a great question. There is actually a social security um, reduction in your benefits if you are collecting social security and working a part-time or a full-time job as well. So you got to be careful of how much money you do make while you're collecting social security. There's three bands that you can see right there on the screen. So if you're under the full retirement age, so if you take Social Security at age 62, 63, 64, any of those numbers underneath the full retirement age, the max amount of money that you can take to collect 100% of your Social Security benefit is $22,320 per year. That's the 2024 limit. Typically every year they keep increasing that number a little bit. So you can say roughly about $22,000. If you go over that number, when you go to file your taxes and report your income, they're going to take for every $2 of earnings above that $22,000, they're going to take away $1 of benefit. All right. So it's a two for one takeaway, anything above that $22,000 mark. Now that reduction of benefits doesn't take place until the next year. So let's say in year one, you're working, you're over that 22,000 cap, you'll still receive your full social security benefits for the first 12 months. But then in month 13, they'll start kicking that back and reducing your social security benefit. That's if you're under the full retirement age. In the year that you reach full retirement age, so again, if you're 66 or 67, you can actually earn just under $60,000 per year in 2024 and not take any reductions to your social security. So it's a little bit of a higher benefit um, and the reduction is less. So for every $3 you have over that $60,000 mark, they're gonna take away again that $1 of benefit. In the month that you reach full retirement age and beyond, there's no income limitations. There's no income maxes as far as what that looks like. So once you hit full retirement age, again, if that's 66 or 67 years old, and let's say you're working part-time or maybe you're doing your own consulting business on the side, you can make as much money as you want and your social security benefits will never be reduced. So more so for people that do take social security early, which is about 73% of Americans, they do end up taking social security earlier than the full retirement age. That's the one thing you want to be mindful of, of not reducing any sort of benefits there. Now, when it comes to Social Security, you actually can change your mind. So unlike the New York State pension system, as we know, when you do decide to retire, it's locked. You can't change your reduction amounts. You can't go from the single life to the reduced amount. You can't change your beneficiary. We understand that, that those decisions are locked. However, with the Social Security Administration, you can actually change what you end up selecting. You can only do it one time in your lifetime, and you have to make that change in the first 12 months. So they do give you one year of a window to go ahead and request for a change in your Social Security benefits. Um, however, you can only do that one point in time. <clears throat> if you do decide to do that, what ends up happening is, is that they will allow you to 
stop receiving Social Security. So let's say that you know you're making way more money in at age 63, 64, your benefits are getting reduced. You're saying, ah, oh, this isn't really benefiting my situation. I don't want to collect Social Security anymore. Well, in that case, in order for them to uh, reverse you selecting your Social Security benefit, you would have to pay back any money that you received to the Social Security Administration. So if you did it in month 11 and they gave you $20,000 of Social Security payments, you would have to pay back and stroke a check to the Social Security Administration for $20,000. So you give that benefit back to them and then they will go ahead and get you out of the Social Security system. Again, you can only do that in your first 12 months um, and you only get one of these uh, for your lifetime. It is available though. Um, not many people do know that or understand that. So if it does come an issue where, again, more so if you're doing a private practice in retirement, you're working part-time or full-time and you still see yourself working a few more years and it's drastically decreasing your social security, then you can go ahead and make that decision. Lastly, we're gonna talk about taxes. So another frequently asked question about social security is, is the money that I receive taxable? The answer is, is it depends, right? So it's based off of your provisional income. And what they do is they take 50% of your social security benefits. So whatever you received on that yearly basis, they take half of that number and they add it to your modified adjusted gross income. Your modified adjusted gross income is the bottom number of your tax return for the year. So whatever your adjusted gross income is, your gross amount minus all the tax credits, the tax exemptions, tax deductions that you have, that's your modified adjusted gross income. They add those two numbers together. If you are filing single or if you're filing jointly, the numbers are a little bit different, but how much your modified adjusted gross income is plus half of your social security benefits, if that number is anywhere from zero to $25,000, your social security payments are free. So you don't have to worry about paying tax on any of those. The next band, in the case if you're filing single, 34,000, 25,000 to lower mark, or if you're married filing jointly, 32,000 to 44,000, you can pay a tax anywhere from zero to 50%. And then anything above, again, if you're single, 34,000, married filing jointly, 44,000, if your provisional income is above that number, then your tax is gonna be anywhere from 7% to 85%. So it won't be 100% tax. Again, it depends on how much money you're claiming come tax time. But if you fall into one of these bands, you may be, um, you may have to pay some sort of a percentage of tax for those payments that you receive. Now, the next question that I get, especially from a lot of educators is, is my pension included in that number? The answer is no. So pension income, investment income, um, all those different types of incomes, annuity income, those do not count towards your towards this figure here. So it's any sort of ordinary income or earned income that you do have in retirement is what's going to be based off of that. So you can still have your pension. You know, if you're making 60, 70, 80,000, maybe close to 100 on your pension, that does not, that those income numbers do not count towards you paying tax to your social security benefits. Now, just to close next steps, you know, again, everybody's different because everybody's going to have different values, different retirement ages when it comes to their social security. What we always recommend is sitting down with a financial planner like us here at Equitable to help you decide what's going to be the best route moving for you, right? Is it going to be take it early, take it full retirement or take it later? One of our softwares that we utilize, and I've shown this a couple of times on these seminars, asset map, visual representation of your financial picture but more specifically to the social security conversation is this top left section right here. The, this represents your income. So this would be current income in the bold, but everything that's grayed out here is going to be your future income. So expected New York state pension, but then also to all your figures on social security, age 62, 67, 70. Once we have those figures from the website, then we can go ahead and run different projections and forecast out which is going to be the best for your situation, taking it early, taking a full retirement or taking a late retirement. So great program. Um, I know a lot of times people after these 
these webinars, they ask, what, do, what are our fees? What do we charge? It's completely free to go through this analysis and to show you your different social security estimations. Or if you do have any other questions about financial planning, retirement planning, life insurance, you know, we can help you out with those as well. I know I'm coming up on time here, 30 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And I know that there was a couple questions here in the chat that I'll go ahead and ask. <clears throat> So somebody was asking if there are spousal um, benefits, does it reduce your own personal benefits? The answer is no. So they would be entitled to at least 50% of your spouse's or ex-spouse's benefit, but that does not reduce your individual. It's a great question. Um, they would just be entitled to receiving half of whatever that figure is for themselves, but the other spouse still receives their 100% of their benefit. Um, that doesn't get reduced because an ex-spouse wants to wants to take advantage of that feature. Um, great question, but but no, that wouldn't reduce that wouldn't reduce your own individual social security. Um, it's not automatic. What you have to do is when you go to file your election for social security, um, you go on the website. They have an online application. You would have to indicate that you want to go ahead and elect to receive your spouse's. 50%, um, and then you would have to fill in their information for them to go back, look at marriage license, marriage records, uh, to determine, yes, you're eligible to do so. So it's not automatic. You would have to run the numbers by yourself, um, which we can go ahead and we can show you how to do that for somebody's situation. I know I'm a little bit over on time, but those were the only two questions uh, that, that I saw here in the chat. Um, again, there's a QR code, um, and actually I can throw it up here again. I'll share my screen. Um, if you do want to ever look at, again, your own personal social security estimations, um, looking through what's going to be the best option for you, here's all my information right here with my phone number, email address, and then again, that QR code goes directly towards my email. So you scan the QR code, generate an email for it, and you can send me an email um, and we could set up a time to to meet virtually in person, whatever whatever you want there. I will stop sharing my screen and hand it back to Lachey. Thank you, Joe. And I don't also see any uh, more questions here. Um, so again, you can use the QR code um, and contact Joe with his email. This will be posted on Saini's website, and then it'll automatically reroute to the YouTube channel. So if you guys want to rewatch re this or see the slides or needed information, it'll be posted um, by this afternoon. And if there's no other questions, um, again, thank you, Joe, for today's presentation. And Absolutely. everyone have a great day. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.